Well, welcome to Gardening with Granny. It is now mid-January. I don't know what you've been doing during the month of January or halfway through it, but I've been doing some. <laughs> Garden planning. This is the garden planner from the MI Gardener. Um, and <clears throat> I've been going through it, marking stuff, um, creating my vision for the garden in 2023. I'm also involved in the pantry challenge and you can follow that on Instagram. And I've been doing broths. And so I spent four or five days doing turkey broth. And then now I'm in the process of doing chicken broth. Uh, I've been um, freeze drying it and having it on hand so that um, I can use it whenever I want to. I love freeze drying, but that's that's another channel. <laughs> so, um, so in uh, Michigan, you what you want to do is find out what your last recorded spring frost date is. And so Michigan is May 5th. Then you look at what is the last fall frost date. And then that gives you your growing time. So in Michigan, the first fall frost date is October 14th. So what is in between is your growing days. And according to Mr. Google Pants, our uh, growing days are 161 for my zone, uh, according to recent records, what they do is they take the mean time of uh, what's been happening in the recent years, and then that's how they predict that. So then <clears throat> you go to your calendar and you start marking um, from day one through the end of the time, and that will tell you your growing time during that time. So then uh, in January, I see I can soak ranunculas and anemones um, around the second week of January. So I started doing that and I will show you um, a little clip here of what I did, hopefully. <laughs> and yes, let me see. Every time I go to the go part, my uh, thing wants to get in the way. There we go. So there's the uh, seeds. Hope you can hear that. That's how I created the aeration. It's once uh, every hour for four hours, I just put it underneath a slow moving faucet. It looked like it's fast, but it's slow. And then I dried, dried them out basically on paper towels and put them in dirt. Then um, I, every morning I go down and give them a good watering and we'll see i'll keep you advised when i transfer them so they should show some little bit of a root but in the meantime what you do is you keep them in a dark area cool dark area until you see them sprouting they still don't want it to be really, really warm. So you don't want to put them under heat mats or anything like that. 
And I'm sure you're going to find tons of information on the internet about planting and soaking um, ranunculus and anemones. But I just wanted to tell you that last year I did the same thing this time of the year. And I, I had pretty good success. Uh, I have to confess that the day that I chose to soak these was um, also where I had a commitment to leave. And shortly after my third hour of soaking, I had to leave. And so those stayed in the water for until the next morning. So I drained them and then I put them on the paper towels to hopefully absorb any of that last moisture. So the reason they're on the paper towels is because I soaked them for that period of time. They really don't recommend that you soak it for any longer than four hours, but well, <laughs> you know, things happen. That's the way life is sometimes. So if you want to try that, I I absolutely love ranunculus. They're like a poor man's rose. They're just gorgeous blooms. And they come so early in the spring. It's like, I can't wait for the rest of the blooms to arrive. Uh, usually April and May, you're seeing some, maybe some signs of greenery, at least in Michigan. You're not seeing blooms, maybe pansies, um, but it's still pretty cold and the ground is still pretty frozen. So I will be um, potting these up and uh, hopefully take you along. Now, there were 50 of the mixed ranunculus and 10 of the red Anemones. Now, I anemones can also be known as Grecian windflowers, and those are kind of like the wild ane anemones. And I do have some of those, but they don't come up until June. So when you buy the corms like that, you can determine when you're going to get them. Um, they do not like the hot summer. Usually mine die out, well, last year we had a really warm June. So even in June, they were starting to struggle. So, you know, it, it really depends on the weather, but they don't like it any higher than 75. So people in the South um, have a hard time growing anemones unless they end ranunculus unless they start very early and put them in a protected area. So um, the next thing on my list is to get together my seeds that I'm going to do for my winter sowing. Now, I have a huge box of seeds that I got when we went to the um, my gardener uh, opening and grand opening and tell you the truth I was too busy at the end of the month and then the holidays and all that so I've not really gone back to that box so I'm going to be doing that with you um, that's what I plan on next week is going through that box figuring out what it is I'm going to do for my winter sewing. Because as you know, last year, or you can go back to that video, I um, did a reveal in April of what succeeded and what didn't. So I will be charting what is going to work for the, I'll have a greater success for my winter sewing project. Now, if those of you who don't know what winter sewing is, it's really amazing. You get plastic jugs. There's lots of information on the um, YouTube about it. But basically, I got jugs from my sister, from my neighbor, and they're plastic jugs. I don't buy milk in plastic jugs uh, or water because we process our own through our reverse osmosis machine. And so we have no need for plastic. 
And I have saved those jugs and I'm going to be washing them out and reusing them. And you um, cut them in half um, ar around the half mark, but you don't cut through the handle. So the handle is your hinge and you create, uh, we did five holes on the bottom so that we had drainage and you put moist soil in, you sprinkle your seeds in, cover the seeds up, just like you were out planting um, your garden. And then you close it up, put, um, we used white duct tape around it. I also stuck um, a marker inside the bucket to determine what it was so that in case the wording on the outside faded, um, I did use a garden marker. I found them to be much better than just using a uh, perma permanent marker and mark the outside what it was. And it's fun. It's something to do. Now, if you don't get any rainfall or if snow doesn't go in, you do have to kind of keep them moist. So you leave the opening um, you don't put the top back on it. And I kind of drizzled water in. I I have to tell you, I'm honest with you. I didn't pay too much attention while it was cold and snowy. And I figured, you know, they don't need much water. But as um, March came along, I wanted to make sure that there was water and I peeked inside those holes and it was actually fun that you could actually see. Now, Roman chamomile was one of the best ones. It had these gorgeous little ferny tops on it. So I, I encourage you to do some winter sowing of your own. And hey, until next time, uh, this is Dr. Mary for the health of it.